So our next talk is by uh, Toy Vo. He's a SOC DFT engineer at Intel San Jose, California, where he's responsible for the development of SOC ATBG strategy and methodology. He has more than 30 years of experience in DFT IP design and verification in multi-board, system level, hardware, software, co-verification with CPU and emulation. He has designed and implemented logic BIS solutions in many ASICs. Uh, Toy received a BSAE from Portland State University in 1986. Hello. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ron, for a nice introduction. Uh, yes. Uh, for, so first of all, I would like to thank uh, all of you for time coming here to see the, uh, this presentation from our team, uh, which is myself, uh, Kevin, Joe, and Tom. So we're all here in this room. Um, next, I would like to thank uh, my, I mean Siemens uh, for inviting us here uh, to learn and share about the technicals, uh, especially in DFT. Uh, it's, 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 it's really a great time, I really enjoy it. And especially seeing a lot of, uh, you know, on colleges, uh, what's in the field. So, thank you. Uh, so, um, just from the previous uh, presentation, you can see, I think, uh, uh, you can see about the 3D SSN. Now we are moving down to a die. <laughs> In fact, so this is basically just, just a 2D, so hopefully you can help with some of the lessons too. And I hope like you may have less questions in the 2D versus 3Ds, okay? <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's start with the, uh, let's quickly overview what the agenda today. So basically, we will go for the introduction. Mainly we will talk about briefly uh, a few key points about what the challenge and what we, our team really looking for. And secondly, why we chose uh, test and SSN. Um, and then next, I will talk about just briefly look at uh, what the SOC architecture with SSN on the chip that we are doing. Okay. And, and then we can quickly talk about the pattern uh, generation of flow. Um, so we got the silicon uh, result, so we'll go over for that. Then finally, we will, summer, so we will go through a summary and uh, highlight some of the conclusions. Okay, so, um, so let's see, uh, I think we all know about the SOC design and test challenges. And you can see many slides, many uh, engineers talking about that. So I'm not going to uh, really list all of that here, but uh, for our team, when we're working on the SOC, actually I just list a couple of points here, the key points that what we are looking for uh, to fit in our design. So first of all, we think um, ATBG automation. When I work in here, in this chip, and we think like, hey, I look at most of the EDA ATBG tools today, you know, it's not really fully automated. It's give you an engine to generate the patterns. However, when as a user, when we use it, we still have to go in learn all the new commands, all the options, and then we do file and do a lot of stuff to get the ATPG patterns working, okay? So we're not really looking for like a push button ATPG because I think we never have it. <laughs> but we more like look into like some kind of the right tool, the right flow that's easy for us to automate our process. Because now today, every day, the schedule will get shorter and the device get bigger. And we, got a, we, we have a lot of pressure in the uh, schedule, the side, tap out, all kinds of stuff, right? So um, select the right ATPG tools. The right flow is very important to us. Well, if, 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 um, if you think like, okay, if we select the right one, the right tool, yeah, probably we make it easier for our job, and also we can easy to do automations. Um, and maybe also, uh, you can have more time to enjoy the coffee too. 
Yes. Um, so next uh, for the scan IO scalability and usability, uh, I think we all know that we need that because we're not working on the one device. We're actually working on the whole the, the device families or we move moving from generation to the next generation and we want to reuse and also try not change as much as possible. So that's, that's the key. Uh, next is the test cost, of course. This is from always from uh, management uh, pressure. You know, always say, hey, your guy uh, cutting test tie, cutting all guy stuff for that. And lastly, like we like you just talk, like you just see the last presentation. Industry now we are in the multi die and three D technology, so we actually look for tools stuff that can support that. Um, yes. So uh, prior to uh, adopting the uh, SSN, I mean the the, the semen test and SSN in our design, we actually spend a few months to evaluate and with the help from Siemens uh, engineers. Now we actually spend a few months, evaluate, create test case, run to all kinds of flows, look at many uh, details inside. And this is we believe Siemens test and SSN actually has an innovative solution that actually can solve our challenges, those that we're just talking about. And so, in this presentation, uh, we actually will share you the successful accomplishments of our first silicon design with uh, Tesson SSN. Okay, so, okay, next, uh, why Tesson SSN? In fact, uh, those points actually uh, form the uh, evaluation that we did in the uh, SSN. We believe SSN has a scalable protocol. Uh, for example, like you only need to define what the data was size at the chip level, and you don't have to worry about what the inside your block, how many EDT chains know, how many logic in that. You just need to, you know, kind of estimate based on your limited IOs. You can just define that, and the tool will take care for that. Secondly, uh, we believe it's an excellent test infrastructure because you look at the way in SSN, it's really created as a hierarchy flow. And it's really built like similar, like if you're familiar with object oriented, basically it's built that way so it's easy for automation and easy for different uh, like verification or uh, testing silicon print up, those okay, kind stuff. Uh, and very important, it does support the uh, IEEE 1687, or uh, usually we call the IJTAC. And uh, this, is very, this is very important to our team because all of the test development automations, you know, uh, we are building uh, based on this uh, 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 1687. Uh, also, we found that it's very easy and very straightforward when we try to retarget a pattern from the block level to the top. And um, later on, we'll show you about the flow and um, how quickly it can, it can get it. Um, also, one of the things we like in the test and SSN is because it can uh, you, say, you can use deep this back, you can insert your logic automatically. And the uh, test and also generate some sanity check, test ban, so you can cover like for IJ tech network and the SSN continuity. Uh, if you go back to the traditional uh, ATBG like without SSN, normally, you know, we got very limited on in terms of uh, scan IOs. And so uh, usually only one block can be run at a time. So if you look at that way, that's time really not really optimal. Because you say, hey, I don't have enough channel to run all the blocks. But with SSN, in fact, you look at, uh, it doesn't matter to the size of your SSN, even you have one clock signal, one data, 
you still can run multiple blocks in parallel. And that's really, really helpful later. Uh, you can see we have one slide to share about how much test time you, you may save uh, just using the SSN uh, uh, versus uh, traditional. Okay. Um, and lastly, like I just mentioned, we are looking for uh, the tool that so, uh, we make sure that SSN uh, does support the multi die and 3 d technology uh, moving forward. Okay, so, uh, so right, so let's take quickly take a look uh, at the device top level that our team worked on. Uh, basically, this is just a simplified picture that I tried to put it in. It's not really scale any uh, um, the real silicon. And uh, sum up the block, if you see some of the block like playing doesn't have names, I mean basically uh, we want to keep the legacy testing for that. So in here you will see that like, we have uh, multiple blocks and with the letter M uh, stand for a module, basically a physical place and round modules. Whatever the same name, just say M1 in here, it means we have the same module with multiple instantiations. And then uh, we have some vertical routing, we're going to be one or V or SR1 for horizontal routing actually running uh, among the chips. Uh, there is um, some of the custom logic that uh, I, I labeled here saying non SSN. It means that due to some of the uh, schedule, some of the constraint, we want to keep it. We, we say we don't want to touch it for now since SSN is the first time we implemented this chip. Right? And finally, you look at, at, the, um, at the bottom, the left, we actually uh, have a block on the secure test manager. Basically, it's mainly it's in interface with software and um, JTAG. Okay, so, um, let me see. So, so this is our work. And all of the M blocks in here means we are going to insert the SSN in that. So let me show you, uh, very quickly show you how we actually insert the logic in here. To simplify the picture, I didn't draw all of them. I think I run out of space here. <laughs> so just draw like a few blocks and quickly show you. It's very, uh, uh, I mean like object oriented uh, the way we, we build the, uh, the chip here. So you look for, for every block here, we insert the SSN test logic into it. So, and each module just consider an object. So we do similar for all of the other blocks and similar for all every block in here. In fact, we actually uh, create a, a, a Python script and we generate those logic and interface directly with testing and sustain. So as it's, it's, you should see the way it builds, it's very hierarchical and very, very convenient uh, for us to do the work. So um, some of the small rectangular block, let's say like TLMAs, it means just simplify the picture, repertoire, make it just so like a small, similar test logic that we insert for on the block here. And so based on the layout, based on the chip, uh, we decide to put it actually two SSN bus running in parallel, one on the top and one on the bottom. And then on the left, uh, we have the uh, IJTAC interface with the STM block. So we have only one single IJTAC network going in the chip, but two SSN bus run in parallel. Yes, uh, because due to some of the routing, if you look at from the uh, bottom to top or top to bottom, if we have some of the, if we have only single SSN bus, it probably, uh, we have to take care of that. So we decide to break the bus into two and then put one top, one at the bottom, and we feel like this is a better architecture. In fact, we actually console with Siemens before we actually add in two bus. Yes. And in here, I just want to mention a little bit about why we think it uh, scalable. Because you look at, from SSN point, an SSN point of view, we didn't really care how inside it changed. 
you just need to define simply define the bus size on the uh, whatever the your assassin bus and then whatever the number of your EDT channel inside keep changing or sometimes you added uh, some more logic those stuff it should not affect about size and also when you we move from one device to another device if you look at uh, uh, for test engineer for manufacturing actually they can do a similar way they just need to know exactly what the bus size of the SSN so they can you know we use a lot of testing, a lot of uh, test development can be automated. So that's one of the beauty that I think in the testing exercise. Yeah. So, um, so next, let me try to quickly elaborate a little bit about what type of test logic we put it in here. So on the left side, you will see most of the block we will insert the SSN logic, basically the SSS, the scan host uh, with two EDT. One to take care for in test and the other one for wrapper chain X test. Yeah, of course, during in test, the wrapper chain is also a part of the uh, EDT uh, for bad for coverage. Um, most of the block, we have two EDT, but some of the bit blocks. We actually have more than one, I mean more than two, we can have like four or five, depends on how we partition the EDT. And I think similar like previous slide, like we say, we have a question like why we have three, three EDT, right? So if you look in the SSN, in the SSN, it's an option that they call the chain group. Basically, you can have many EDTs you want, and then you just create one chain group for each EDT. Or the same thing, just say you have you want to put a different chain for your um, clock on uh, like OCC. You can actually add in another chain group to take care of that. So there's no no limitation about like how many EDTs you should put in or what. It just depends on your design layout, what the work that you want to be scan length. Okay, stop. Yes. Um, and for each block in here. Since uh, we, we like the hierarchy flow, and we believe we put a tab on each block, we say uh, some of the routing, and also easy for the third party to just say some of the block, uh, those have some boundary scans. And so you can actually take the block, and even you can use third party tool, you can do some boundary scan test or some or other uh, JTAC development test. So that's why we decide to put in the tab on its block, you know. And um, if you just look at in here, it's um, to be honest, well, we actually uh, develop actually our team actually de de develop and design a, a Python script that we do all this insertion automatically. I mean, for all the blocks, even the logic are different between blocks to blocks. But um, it's, it's very convenient, very easy, because you just trick every module just like uh, an object, and then you can do similar, okay? Uh, so next, um, uh, let me quickly share about, just, this is just like a, a, an example how we routed clocks, uh, especially SSN clock. Um, so, to simplify, I just draw a few blocks here. So basically, uh, we are using the SSN with, uh, I think, around 250 megahertz clocks. And, and strutting is, um, I mean, symbol. If you refer the testing SSN user guide and documentation, you will see it show a very, very good example of how to, how to route the SSN clock using either uh, normal clock tree or source single clocks. Uh, I guess this one we just quickly show you it's routing. Of course, this is one way you can route or you can go like uh, M1 to M2, M3 and come back, you know. But I think the basic idea in here try to show is we need clearly, we need two separate paths for the, uh, the clocks. Basically a forward and a return path. It's just like you, you, you go on the route with the blocks and then you need to route back. And of course, I didn't show in here, but you can put um, boxes between to loop back 
for fall isolation or just say just like some socket sometimes you don't want to travel and good for silicon diagnostic so i i didn't draw in here so just draw a, a symbol of routing and of course uh, that's another thing those understand the pipeline so it, it's somewhere that you have the um the IGA tag model for that, for that you can plug and you can put pipeline anywhere you want based on your timing budget, uh, you know, closing timing. And so, um, so yeah, as I mentioned before, as a clock network, uh, either you can use short signal clock. I think like for 3D case that I uh, show, I think the best way to go is uh, a short signal clock. Yes, because uh, it's basically for 3D, you cannot do, a, it's, it's kind of very hard to do the balance clock tree, right? So, yeah, and um, of course, you can refer more information from test and document for that. So, yeah, next, uh, let's quickly uh, show about how we do ATBG uh, for in, in this process here. So basically, if you look at for each block from RTL, after we insert the test logic tab controller on the control logic from, I mean, custom control logic for each block, that then will generate, uh, generate basically the test database. We, go, we usually call TSDB, you know, at the RTL level. And basically, this is a very, very good approach because um, for us, we build this one, each block, just like an object. So it means every block, we go exactly the same process here. We insert it, and then the next step, we just take it and do scan insertions, synthesis and scan insertions uh, to generate the uh, gay level necklace. Uh, in, in this flow, because we use some kind of uh, third party uh, scan insertions, so basically we cannot get some of the automatic, like if you use test and scan insertion. Basically, if you use test and scan insertion, it's actually JRA for you on up the gate view, on up the new TSDB, on up the information you need for future ATBG. But for our flow, because we want to keep some legacy already uh, designed uh, internally, we use a different, uh, um, you know, uh, different insertion. And so we need an, uh, uh, another step that we call the gray view, test and gray view. Basically, it try to take the GN necklace and try to merge with whatever the RTL view, so it can be a, the latest database, so it can prepare for ATBG. Okay. And then next, just do ATBG. It's just like a normal run. And um, basically, we run on the ATBG verification on over here. Um, yeah, I just want to apologize that we didn't want to put the verification uh, uh, details in here because uh, I don't think we have enough time for the talk. But uh, basically, just use as uh, and recommended. Just JRay, Verilog, Testband, and verify it. That's one of the nice things that I think uh, if you use this and you, you, you all know that we have the uh, the IJ gray box and the scan gray box could be created from Tessons. And uh, to be honest, this is very, very helpful for us. You know, because it's actually just simplify your GUN necklace and you could save you a lot of ATPG runtime, same as, you know, retargeting tie or ATPG pattern generation, okay. So, so as said, um, we do is just like an object. So after, so after you have all of the uh, blocks being run in ATPG, so it's just a matter like you just wrap all of the blocks and do a retargeting flow. And it's, it's, it's very, very simple to do. It's just like you just need to create one new file and do all of that. Yeah, of course, the good part is that is we can use the IGA tag gray box here, and it's really say uh, a lot of runtime for that. Yeah, of course, from that retargeting, you can generate tester, and then the same way you can, it will generate the Verilog test band, so you can verify it directly at the top. 
And also one of the beauty of this is um, you don't have to wait for all the blocks to be ready to do retargeting. Whatever the block is ready, you can retarget, and the rest you just use some IJ that pay box. So similar for the X test, you know, we do a similar. The only, basically we do similar is just do block level ATBG. The good part is you, use the, you just use the scan ray box. You don't have to use the full necklace. It takes forever and sometimes maybe impossible, depends on your, your chip size. So similar we run with J ray develop that span and verify it. Okay. So, um, so here is our uh, first silicon test result um, for, from that they design. So the first day we test, I mean the first tie test, we got all the SSN loopbacks and chain test passed. We have tell our 14 modules in ATPG tests are passing on the first run. Um, all of the full chip X tests are passed. And, and there's two modules that have uh, some problems because the way we do some of the block, we have a little bit custom. Basically, we, it relies on some firmware initialization stuff before we do ATBG. So we figure out, oh, there's some issue with that. So uh, after we fix that, then it's, uh, it's, it's passing. So for this design, we actually use uh, 250 megahertz for the uh, scan clock, I mean for the SSN clock versus the 100 megahertz in the ship. Now let's uh, quickly show you the test high saving here, how much we, we, we say with, with SSN and versus like with DAO. Basically, let's like say with DAO SSN, very much like only one ADT block can be run at a time. So, uh, we, we, uh, so I actually create some test case actually run on the uh, certain block. Just, just for example, this block took about some milli, millisecond, I mean, yeah, millisecond to do it. Similarly, another small block run like this. And so you run like on this block, and this is your total tie. However, with SSN, basically on the blocks, you can run in parallel. And this is the test tie, you, you, you actually get that 41.8 millisecond versus 62. You know? And similarly, we did another run, and similarly, we got a uh, similar result. Basically that. So based on just a typical uh, two test case here, uh, I just quickly tell you it's around like 34 percent. That's the saving. It's just like between SSN versus traditional. Okay. So um, in summary, uh, we we believe it's very easy transition when you move from traditional EDTT, EDT channels uh, base into the SSN uh, package base, yes. And SSN really scalable, reusable, and we will say it's an excellent uh, pattern retargeting. Also, just look at that test type optimization reduction versus traditional ATBG. And uh, also, we, based on the way we work, we believe it's actually improved the productivity and efficiency because it's really reduced a lot of engineering work in terms of uh, development uh, flow stuff. Okay, and uh, final, we believe SSN is absolutely an innovative solution and it really works. So thank you. <laughs>